Hello and welcome back to a new Mountain Blade Warband video. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the link above to see the playlist for the rest of the videos with Ned Stark and some of the other tutorials that I've done for the game. And then I'm going to get on with uh, explaining why I've done this video. So this is a how to take a castle. Now this is a bit more of a how to take a castle without heavy losses kind of video. And I'm going to use two different videos to start with to show examples of what not to do uh, especially if you don't have the right army combination so this first video is where I've got me Swadi and Man at Arms and I've just charged at the castle uh, with my infantry troops just trying to batter my way in I have a uh, standing army of 80 units including myself uh, there is about 180 troops in this uh, castle here with a lord as well. Um, now the problem is this is taken by a Kurgic Carnate group so they have a lot of raised troops but they also have quite a lot of good melee troops at the same time. So it's a case of trying to battle your way through but unfortunately obviously if you start doing very well um, and then new, new enemies are going to arrive very quickly. Now the second video that is going to come on in a moment is where I've then gone to my other castle, swapped around all my Swadian troops and my infantry troops for all my crossbow troops that I had in there. Now I am the type of person who will all usually always use sie well, sieging uh, with ranged troops, uh, especially with my crossbow troops. Um, so the second video is still going to be ranged troops but they're going to charge. And then I'm going to show you how to do it properly after that. Um, <laughs> it went a little bit skew with because I thought for a moment I was going to have to show you what my usual tactics were but have to return with more upgraded troops. But it didn't turn out that way in the third video. So we'll just have to wait for the third one. But I'll do some description as we go. So... The main factor I found for taking a castle without actually having heavy losses, and it's quite easy to do, is firstly having the right army set up. So like I say, for me, if I'm going to try and take a castle, I'm going to take ranged troops, I'm going to take quite well experienced ranged troops, because all I'm going to do is I'm going to stand them in lines, and I'm going to get them starting to ping the uh, enemy troops on the battlements. Um, that's why I like to do that. So also the best thing to have then is your levels or party levels, having a higher level for tactics and engineering. If you have a higher level of tactics, it means that you can start the battle with more troops. If you have a higher engineering level, then it decreases the time taken to make a siege work. So these are quite useful to have as high levels. So this is the second video, like I said, this is where I've swapped over and got my range troops from my other castle. I've just set them to do what they want pretty much and they can just try and shoot and kill. They do do very well, to be fair. You've seen a lot of enemy troops die, but you can see a lot of my troops are getting knocked out or we've taken five losses so far. So at this point, it's starting to rack up and not be vehicle siege eventually because it's the case of when you get the reinforcements even on both sides if the castle obviously has a lot more reinforcements in there they're fresh troops your troops are battered because you've got well obviously you've got less less troops and they're in the fight for longer but these guys are doing incredibly well for a moment I thought they were actually going to do it uh, but <laughs> It doesn't occur like that in the end. The last round of reinforcements from the castle actually uh, beat them in the end. But the main thing I, I feel here is when you are committing a siege, make sure to monitor the battle itself. So on my setup, uh, if you hit, hit the delete button, it brings up this page here. And this is the point where you can see how many of your troops are in the battle, how many are wounded, how many are routed, how many are dead. And you can also see enemy positions. You can also order your troops from here. Tell them to advance, fall back, stand closer, spread out. 
You can tell them to mount, dismount. You can tell them to hold your fire, fire at will. Use any weapons. You bl use blunt weapons if you just want to knock troops out. Um, you can also usually position them using uh, this little map on the right hand side as well. So this is a handy little tool. And I'll go into more of my tactics right now. So this is me with my army. So what I've done now is I've got them to all hold position. My, I'm then going to get the infantry and the cavalry to retreat backwards 10 paces. Uh, to do this, you hit number one for infantry, uh, three for cavalry, and two for in, uh, range troops. And this highlights the separate units. So I'm now going to get my archers, well, range troops to now start advancing a little bit closer. Uh, so yeah, my tactic is I get, <coughs> get them to come a little bit closer. Not too close, remembering that if you come too close now, the archers then get the advantage. The crossbow is more powerful at a little bit more range. But at this point, these guys are going to ping, ping straight into the castle and take out the defenders. So what I like to do is I like to try and get the lads to take out, obviously, as much infantry as possible. Uh, but hopefully they're taking out more of the uh, home, home range troops. And then I'll kind of get a bit closer and I'll start pinging the battlements and try to do what I see what I can do and see if I can take out some troops at the same time. So what I usually do then is I then get these guys to use up all their ammo. And my tactic is then as soon as they've used up all their ammo, ammo sorry, um, because the castle can continuously get reinforcements. So if they then get more ranged troops. I want to then I want to hit retreat so to do this you need to get away from the enemy obviously hit the tab button and hit retreat so what this does is it allows me to then reset everyone it allows the obviously my range troops to re re regain ammo again and we're gonna go again so what happens then is that you lose a little bit of um, party morale, only a touch, but you also gain it depending on how well you do in the actual battle itself. So for example in this one we're actually killing a lot of troops here uh, and we're taking very little losses at all. Uh, so we actually gain morale in the end on this one. So then after that what you either do is that you either abandon the siege to then upgrade your troops because you're going to gain experience from this battle. So upgrade your troops and then you can re-engage again with better, better experienced troops. Or you can just prepare the ladders again. So it's completely up to yourself. Just depends on how the battle's gone and what you think is the best thing to do. Like I say, you don't actually, sometimes you don't actually lose any morale from abandoning the siege. Because all you're doing is you are improving your troops. That's what I do. Um, so then we can gain the gain the advantage again for preparing another attack and going again. So I repeat this. I repeat this until I feel like we've got the defenders on the back foot. Um, I then will maybe sometimes adjust my army right up towards the end to then bring in my, my more experienced infantry troops so I can get them to charge in as the lads are pinging the walls. Uh, so this is a case, case of set them all up. If you set them up at the right range, they do a lot of damage. For example, they, these guys have done really well here. They've killed a lot of people. They've done 61 kills. Now this is a bit where the computer goes a little bit funny and adds on a few kills because we've retreated. So the boys have done a lot of kills. So this is the part where I've decided, right, I'm just going to go straight back in and attack again with with the siege and I'm going to do the exact same thing I'm going to set the lads up to in the lines and I'm going to get them to ping the walls again let's take out as many defenders and I'll tell you about my last little tactic in a moment so one of the other little tactics I usually do which you'll see at some point I think is that once the 
defending army has got a lot less uh, ranged troops. I usually myself will go up towards the ladder, depending obviously on the siege, on the if it's the castle with ladder, the ladders or a type of ladder. For example, this type of ladder can go both ways. The actual <laughs> the defending army will actually come out of this one, whilst in other ladders, the because you obviously you go up and over a proper brick wall, the other ladders doesn't do that. The defending army can't come out. So it's a little bit more risky on this tactic here. But what I will usually do is I will ping them from afar right, like I'm doing now. Use up quite a lot of my ammo. And then I will walk up the ladder, pick up more bolts. And then I will get close, close enough to the enemy where I will get them to make a move on me. So where I, they will actually try and strike me. At this point, I will either shoot them in the head. Or obviously my ranged troops behind me, because these guys are now, you know, move their shield away from their body, will then ping them themselves. So this is a little tactic to kind of get them to move, move and become defenseless. Um, but a lot of times with the other ladders, I will go up that ladder, get them to get them to make a move on me, and I will shoot them in the head. Now I've done this a lot of times, and I've taken out a lot of troops, infantry troops up there that are going to do a lot of damage to my troops if I decide to storm the castle. So this is my kind of tactic. It's a very easy tactic, very good tactic. I've taken many, many castles with a lot more troops than me uh, and at some, a lot of times I've had a lot less troops. All I've had is good range troops with me. So this is a very easy way to take castles without heavy losses but inflicting maximum damage and using the best tactics possible obviously with siege towers it's a little bit different because the problem is obviously if you're abandoning the siege or preparing the siege again the problem is obviously if you're taking too long because it's a siege tower the enemy obviously have a chance to then travel to the castle that you're, you've put on the siege and try and take it well, or at least take you or, you know, defend the castle. That's the problem you can have with at least the siege towers. With the ladders, obviously, it only takes a few hours. With the siege towers, it can take a couple of days in the game. So that is one thing to keep in mind in this tactic. So like I say, once again, my all my range troops have run out of ammo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit re retreat again because I know there's a lot of troops in, in this uh, castle still. So we've taken out just over 100 of the 180. So like I say, I'm going to abandon siege now. I'm going to go into party and I'm going to upgrade all my troops. So I want to do a few more footmen and I want to do upgrade all my range troops. So now I've got a lot of a lot more road doctor sharpshooters. I've got a lot more veteran crossbowmen now. And all I'm gonna do is look at how much troops they've got left. So they've got just over 80. So I'm gonna prepare the siege towers. Well, siege towers, the siege ladder again. And I'm gonna attack again. So this is, I'm gonna still set up the same way because now it's on even terms it's still it's now more one to one ratio instead of it being a two to one or over or towards a three to one in the battles so I'm still gonna set up get my arches to set line and advance a little bit and just ping the walls so like I say it's just a case of repeat repeat and go again if, however, obviously you've got a different tactic that you use, make sure to let me know in the comments below because obviously there are going to be quite a few different ways to do this, but this is what I found the best way in my mind to do this by just getting the range troops in the setting line and just battering the walls because like I say, the amount of times that one of them shields can actually take a battering, eventually 
the shields will break and then the infantry troop is vulnerable. So like I say, we don't actually have to engage this troop. It's completely obviously different sometimes when you try to take a town slash city because the actual standing start well, starting area is a lot smaller, a lot more combined and can be a nuisance, but you can still do the same tactic try to take a town or city you've just got to be a little bit more careful and obviously it would be better to have much more experienced troops so like i say, i was now going up the ladder this ladder is very awkward obviously for trying to shoot upwards because it's actually quite a decent angle but like i say, this is where i start getting closer shooting any troops that i can because if i can take out someone who's either weak weakened or a lower range troop my range troops behind me can actually move on to someone else and obviously these shields are now getting pretty battered so these guys are all losing their shields because this is the best way like i say to take a castle without heavy losses you don't want to try and take a castle lose over half your men and keep the castle and then somehow garrison this castle because that's something i'm going to talk about in a moment is the fact of what happens when you've taken the castle and you want that castle because if you've lost half your troops and you just put in 30 40 men the enemy are going to come straight for that castle and it's going to get taken so there we go brain troops i've done the day we've won we've taken I think what we've had about 10 deaths overall something like that we've now released one of our captives I can now stock up on troops from the um, prisoners and my idea was take the Rodox because they're gonna come part of my party take the best of the foreign troops that you can because if I'm gonna take this castle I'm gonna garrison them straight into this castle because if you have too many different uh, troops from two diff from several different areas, your morale can be affected badly. Obviously, I've got the spoils of war here. So, obviously, after taking this castle by myself and taking the time to do this, uh, obviously, I'm going to ask for this castle. So, the thing is, you've got to wait around. Because the problem is, if you garrison troops into this into this uh, castle right now, you're, because obviously you're not exactly potentially going to get it. If you garrison your troops into this castle right now, then all that's going to happen is you're going to lose your troops if the king decides to give it to someone else. So that's another thing. So this is why I then wait around at the castle, because I protect the castle now until it's going to be mine. I'm going to continue obviously upgrading my troops. I'm going to take on any lords who think they can take me on. Like this lord here. Thankfully I had a friend friend in the area. But we didn't need him because this guy, this guy has pretty poor troops. So thankfully the king actually gave us the castle. And I've just garrisoned it with all my troops now. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe and put your opinion below. And your tactics below. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.